Hi, I'm State Representative Doyle Hefley, and welcome to the 103rd Pennsylvania Farm Show. Uh, we're here today with Karen Wolkowitz from the Penn State Extension, Berks County, and uh, we wanted to talk a little bit to Karen uh, about uh, the display you have behind us here and what some of the ramifications and the effects are of a new invasive species, uh, which many people have heard of now, the spotted lanternfly. So it actually came into this country in 2014, and people didn't understand at that point what the problem would be. It's actually a beautiful insect, but it can do a lot of damage. Uh, one of the main concerns now is for the vineyards, the grapes, and also hops, which might be important to some of the viewers. Yeah, and, and from what I'm what I'm told right now, uh, the, there's certain areas that have been quarantined across the state. Certain areas in Berks County and in Carbon County, the 122nd yes. District, we have we now are seeing the uh, the uh, spotted lanternfly there. And there's several different phases that the spotted lanternfly. Uh, and and as they go through the different phases, that right now the thing that people should be looking for would be the egg masses or the egg sacs. Yes. And uh, and what color and how would we identify that between that or say uh, an egg sac from a uh, uh, from a spider or a gypsy moth, which also we want to destroy the gypsy moth egg sacs as well. Okay, so these are very distinctive. They have a putty-like look. Um, the eggs are laid 30 to 50 in a mass, and sometimes you'll see them sticking out. They are in rows, and then a putty covers them, and over time it becomes cracked. So what people want to do right now is if they find these putty-like masses, you want to scrape them off of the tree or whatever hard surface they're on with something like a hard card. We are giving out some little packs for people. You can't just scrape them onto the ground because they're still viable. Okay. So you need to scrape them into a baggie full of either rubbing alcohol or um, hand sanitizer, and then you would seal that and dispose of that properly. I know one of the things in the conversation that we had had uh, last year at the farm show talking about gypsy moth was some people would say if you would take Dawn dish detergent and mix it with water and spray the gypsy moth stacks or, or when you knock them down put them in, in, a, in, a, in a container that would hold the dish detergent and, and water uh, that it would kill them as well. Is that true as well for the uh, spotted lanternfly? Penn State Extension recommends that you not use Dawn dish detergent outdoors. Now, okay. if you are going to contain it in a container, that would be okay. Dawn dish detergent, we do not know what the ingredients are. It's not made to be put outdoors. Um, we would prefer that you use a pesticide if you need to use something like that because that has a label which is a legal document. If you want to do something when the nymphs or adults are out that's non-toxic, you can band your trees with sticky tree bands. The nymphs have sticky bottoms of their feet, so they stick very readily to the tree band. You can cut the tree bands down to a small size to hopefully minimize um, bycatch of birds and things like that. You can also put a cage around the sticky trap so as not to catch squirrels and birds. Okay. So right now, what, what people would be looking for would be the egg sacs. And Only the egg masses are available right now. Um, the next thing will be the nymphs. They start out as small, black. They look like ticks, but with white spots. You can tell the difference between a tick and a, and a nymph because they're very active. If you come up to them, they're going to really move around, whereas ticks don't really do that. You'll find them on plants. Um, the adults that everybody is becoming familiar with do not come until later in the season, like July. Now, the, the nymphs will attack younger plants, and from what my understanding, they actually, they will kind of drill into the plant and they pull the sap out, and the adults will attack larger plants. So really what we're looking at, it possibly could devastate our young trees in our forest, from maple trees to uh, oak trees, apple trees, any and, and grapevines, so any of those plants are very susceptible, and uh, this could really devastate Pennsylvania forests. One of the things that, that people are being told uh, is that you know when, when they're traveling right now with the egg sacs is to inspect their vehicles. If you're going on a, on a long distance travel, maybe look at your camper. Uh, if you're taking a camper, uh, they like to lay their egg sacs on a smooth, flat metal surface and, and scrape them off and make sure that you're looking. The last thing you want to do is, is tr be transporting them uh, and, and, and spreading them. So we're discovering it's not just metal surfaces. They do seem to like metal. They do like rust. They like things that vibrate, so machinery. But we found them even on the soft outdoor or cushions on your furniture so turn the things over if you are finding those putty masses make sure you destroy those they can be on anything so on a vehicle we recommend that you look on the undercarriage if at all possible pop the hood look in the engine compartment 
If you're just moving around within the quarantine zone, it's not necessary to do that. It's whether if you're moving in and out of the quarantine zone. We don't want to see people moving them to areas where they haven't been. And one point to make is even if you're in a quarantine zone, not all areas of your county have the infestation. In Berks County, where they came in, which is where I live, yeah. there are still parts of the county that do not have the spotted lantern fly. So I think what the, the public needs to know, the, the bugs are, are not, they don't, they don't sting, they don't bite, they don't, they, they, they're not irritating in that regard. However, they could be totally devastating to a lot, to our forests and also to our farmers, the apple orchards, the peach orchards, the pear trees, all these young trees. And even as, as, the, as the insects get larger, will attack larger trees are very susceptible. What they do is they pull the sap out of the tree and the tree eventually would die. Uh, yes, um, some people are saying that they think they've been bitten. That's impossible. It is a sucking mouth part. They do not suck on people. So I think people just, are a little leery when they see this creepy crawly insect. Um, they do, um, they, with the grapevines, they eat the vines, not the grapes, but they do affect the sugar content of the grapes and the wine. Um, they can kill young trees, we've seen that happen. The biggest tree that they like the most is the tree of heaven, also yeah. called the ailanthus tree. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to eradicate the ailanthus tree. Which is um, also an invasive species. Which nothing else, thank goodness, uh, feeds on. Okay. So you will not kill beneficial insects by killing those trees. You can do a trap tree where you poison the tree so that all of the insects flock to that tree and are poisoned when they feed on it and it doesn't kill the tree. So we'll kill most of the trees by hack and squirt method because you can't just, again, it's, it's hard to kill. Yeah. You can't just kill them. And then we leave some trap trees that are poisoned and then the bugs feed on those. And yeah. literally leave, you can get them you know, up to six inches deep around the base of the tree when they're dead. So I guess, and we're about out of time right now for this segment, but what we really want to do is, so if somebody is looking for more information, they think maybe they've seen these on their property or maybe they're having a somewhat of an infestation, how can they reach out? How can they contact the Penn State Extension? The Penn State Extension operates in pretty much every county across yes. the Commonwealth. There's one in Carbon County. It's lo located uh, right next to the Mock Trunk Watershed. Uh, and if anybody needs information, they can contact my office. But what's the best way to get in touch with the Penn State Extension in their local areas? Um, they can contact the Penn State Extension by phone or they can go online because all of Penn State Extension has a website and then it's broken down by counties. You can also contact your local conservation district. So every county also has a conservation district and they are also, they have funding to help um, against this pest. So up to this point it's mostly been commercial properties that they have been contacting. Now there is a little bit of money in Berks County, I'm not sure about other areas, for larger homeowner properties that have a lot of Tree of Heaven. But Penn State Extension or uh, local conservation district is your best bet. And thank you. And if you are in the area of the Pennsylvania Farm Show, stop down and visit the booth here and pick up some more information. Or you can contact my office and we can get to that information out to you. Thank you.